Hi guys, it's Jen from iCreate Crafts. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create these awesome keychains using sublimation and keychains. They were so easy to create, so let's get started. I don't know about you guys, but I am so ready for summer and this is the greatest project that I can start right now before spring even arrives. I'm starting in Design Space. I'm going to go to Upload and I'm going to show you what files I just purchased. So I purchased these beautiful, beautiful butterfly keychains on designbundles.net. So I'm going to click on each one of these because I want to make one of each. And I'm going to click Add to Canvas. So when you get these, they're probably going to be the wrong size. You need to always resize your images to whatever you have. So my keychains are the sublimation ones. So I'm going to show you really quick how to do that. These are very, very simple to create. You don't have to do anything with this, but change the size of the file here that we have. So you can see all these really beautiful butterflies here. Like I said, I am so waiting for spring to come. So the only thing you have to do with this is actually change the size. So depending on what size your keychain is mine's a two by two so i'm going to make my image just a little bit bigger than a two by two and i will show you why after i'm done printing it so i'm going to go up to this right here i'm going to put uh, 2.5 and we're going to see what that looks like i just want it just a little bigger than the two so maybe i'll do 2.3 and then click enter. So you see automatically, if you don't unlock it, it automatically changes it right here. So I'm gonna do each one of these to the 2.3. And then again, I will show you why when I'm done printing this out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fast forward this part so you don't have to watch this. All right, so here we are. So a thing I forgot to mention with this, so when I uploaded these two design bundles, I made it do it to print then cut. You can see right here, each one of these are print and cut. So it's not going to do anything on your Cricut machine. You do not need your Cricut machine for this at all. You're just going to cut these out by hand afterwards. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So this is done. This is like I said, this is all that you have to do. But depending on your keychain, Mine are actually two-sided, so I'm going to actually duplicate this to make um, double of them. So I'm going to select all of them. I'm going to go over here to this little plus sign here and push duplicate. So now I have two of each one. So if I wanted to use, you know, this for the front and this for the back and this for the front and this for the back, or if I want to do it, you know, each way, if I wanted to make this one and then do a separate one for this one, you can do it that way as well. So I'm going to kind of play around and figure out how I want to do it. But depending on um, your keychain, like I said, mine is double sided. So I'm going to use two of these for each side. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click make it and I'm going to show you what it looks like. So for this, if you're new to sublimation, uh, you need a printer that you changed into a sublimation. Um, you need to use different ink on this and you need to use a different kind of paper. I will get into all that going forward and I will leave everything in the description below if you are new to this. So the only thing I want to do is make myself, I give myself, I should say, a little bit of room to print out each one of these. And again, I will tell you why in just a minute. So I'm gonna move these. And then this, I'm gonna move this to the next page. You can see there's another page right here. So I wanna click the three little dots here. I'm gonna move object and I'm gonna switch it to this page, this one right here. And then I can move these as well. So I'm gonna go back to the first page and then move this one because I wanna have a little bit of room on each one. And again, I will show you why. So I'm gonna go to the first one again just give it a little bit of room right here so I can take my scissors and cut in between because like I said you're not going to use your Cricut for this you're just using it to cut out the or print the design so I'm going to go ahead and move these over a little bit more as well and then I'm going to make sure that I go down here and mirror both image both pages here so they're both mirrored here if you had text this would make more sense but I'm just using you know, I'm mirroring it, so I'm just used to doing it. So I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm going to push continue. And here's the only thing it's going to do. Like I said, you're not using your Cricut machine on this. You just need to send it to your printer. So depending on what printer you're using, um, this is what I use here. So I have the Epson, I have a regular printer, and I have a sublimate, um, 
sub I have a sublimation printer as well. So I'm going to click on that one. I have the Epson. Let's see. Mine is the 2803. And then I just use Hippo ink um, for sublimation. Um, but again, I will leave all that in the description below. Then I'm going to go ahead and click this add bleed. I want to get rid of that. So just like that. So I'm going to click print and then it's going to send it to my printer. You're going to hear it in the background and then once it's done printing it's going to come back up again and it's going to um, ask you to print the next one. So you can probably hear it in the background here it is printing it out for me. All right so I printed my first one then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click on this one and it says send to printer. I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm changing my printer here. I'm taking off the ad bleed and I'm going to go ahead and print this one as well. Then I'm going to set up my camera and show you the next step and why I put um, these a little bit bigger and also made them uh, stretched out a little bit. So, Okay, so I'm at my heat press station right now. I'm going to talk about my heat press really quick. Um, this is a new one from HTV Rond. I absolutely love this. I have my old one over here, but a couple things on this is I love the pull-out drawer on here, and I love the features that they have on here. It's very easy to set your temperature and your time on here. There's a little timer button here that you can push and a plus and minus, and I also love it that it's automatic. So I'm going to show you really quick. If I close this it's automatically going to go down. Now, if you need to open it, you just push a little R and it will automatically open up for you. Uh, really love these things on here that they have. So I'm going to show you really quick. This is my design. Like I said, I like to move them out a little bit and I like to make them a little bit larger than the image itself. What I'm going to do is cut this out and show you. So these are the register lines. Um, you want to make sure you get rid of those because any color on here is going to transfer with your heat. So here are two, because like I said, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a bunch of color on here, so I was kind of learning that way. And here are my keychains. I just bought these off of Amazon. These are subbing keychains, and they come with the key rings and with the little tassels, so you can do those later on afterwards as well. Um, and then also has plastic on here, which you want to make sure you peel off first. So taking the first one, kind of figuring where you want it to go, you have to make sure that this is the top here and I just place it right on top. And this is the reason I like making it a little bit bigger is so you can see your image behind it and kind of guesstimate where you want it to go. Then I'm going to take a piece of heat tape. So I have this dispenser here. I'm going to take a piece of heat tape and kind of go around just to make sure it's going to stay in place. And you don't have to go nuts with this. It's just for it to stay in place just like that. Sometimes I don't even use that and I kind of just lay it flat like I'll show you really quick I'm not recommending it but what I do is take it like this hold it really tight and then push it down but you still have you know the possibility of it moving so it's up to you if you want to do that or not I kind of just go either way just take it and flip it but again I highly recommend using the heat tape why not right so there's two there I'm just gonna do two more since I have them right here and remember these are going to be uh, both sided so some of them I don't want them to look the same so I'm just going to take another one and do the same thing just like this put it on there and then I'm just going to flip it and you always want to make sure that your paper is upright so upside right and I'm just going to take one more and put it on here just like that so I'm just going to do four for now and then I'm going to take a piece of Teflon paper that I have here that comes with the machine I'm going to lay it over it very carefully because I only taped that one. So again I don't recommend that. I recommend taping each one but for this I'm just not going to. So all I have to do is close this and it's going to automatically work for me. It's going to press it for me at the uh, right um, pressure and then I have my time and my uh, temperature set. So I just have to wait for it to be finished. When it's done, it'll just load up, unload itself and lift up, and then I can show you what it looks like. So I didn't get it in time, but I actually did push the button to, or I didn't get it in time. It would actually finish and it lifted up. So I'm going to show you what this looks like. You want to be very careful because this is very hot. I highly re recommend getting a pair of heat gloves like these because, especially for this project, they are going to be extremely hot. So I'm going to go ahead and take it off. You can see here's the paper and it has a little bit of color on the edge. That's where your um, keychain did not hit that edge. So here is the first one here. I'm going to leave it there and I'll show you the next one. So again, you want to toss that paper and here's the next one. And then here's the one 
where I taped it. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So I want to be very careful to pull that off. So that's that one. And then the last one here. Whoops. So here, I'm going to show you. Don't do what I did because sometimes this happens. So this is kind of neat that way, I think, if it shows up. So you can see there's ghosting on here, but I actually kind of like that because I used the tape. I did not use the tape, and I used the Teflon uh, paper over it. So this is what happened. That is called ghosting. But for this, I actually kind of like how it looks. So I'm going to leave it the way it, that one. So now you want to do the back side. You're going to do the same exact thing. You're going to take your image which I have here, and then you're going to do the same thing. Like I said, if you want to have the same image on the same keychain, you go right for it. I like to switch them up a little bit, so I'm just going to use a different one here. But now, you want to have your image looking at you while you put your paper on the back. Whew, that's still hot. So now I'm going to take a piece of the tape, since I learned my lesson, right? And I'm going to carefully put that on here which again is still very hot. Sorry, it's off camera. I'm sorry guys, I didn't realize that. I'll move this in a little bit. There you go. So I'm going to put my glove back on and I'm going to flip it. You want to make sure that you're going to flip your paper so your paper goes up right. So I have one more here, so I'm going to do the same thing. Just kind of line it up where I want it to go. Whoops, I almost did it again. So I would have had this image on there. So you want to make sure that you take the white part and put it on there. And then you can take your tape and put it on there. So don't do what I did, okay guys? Sometimes I get away with it when I'm not on camera, but this time I didn't. So that's what happens when you don't use the tape. So I'm going to go ahead and do these two. I'll leave these to the side. Put my Teflon tape back on, and, or paper. And I'm sorry, I did not say what I have my heat press set at. So I have it at 400 degrees for 60 seconds. And every project you do is different. So please look into that um, for whatever you're using. Uh, your keychains might be different than mine. So you always want to make sure that you're not having your... Uh, temperature too hot or your time too long. So it has 44 seconds left. I'm going to come back when this is all done and I'm going to show you what they look like. Two seconds. I didn't push anything and it automatically goes up. It's really awesome like that. So you just want to pull your bottom part out and again put your gloves on because it's going to be very hot. So I'm going to show you really quick what they look like. So here's the first one here. Oh, much better. So the other part has ghosting on here, which I said I really like. So there is the first part. And then there's the other side. And then I'll show you this one really quick, too. So they both have it on each side. So there's the first part. There we go. And then there's the second. So I'm going to show you the next step of, uh, or I'm, I'm going to show you what they look like when I put the tassels and the key ring on them. Um, it's really easy to put those together, but I'm going to go ahead and put some together and I'm going to show you a couple of what they look like. I've done a few of these already, which I'm really excited about. So stay tuned to see what the uh, final project looks like. So easy to create. I hope you guys followed the instructions. And if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Um, they were so much fun to create. doesn't have to be just these kind. You can put anything on them, but the possibilities are endless. But I hope you like this DIY step-by-step -step tutorial. Please hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already and leave any questions that you may have down below and I will help you as I can.